I'd like to introduce our three speakers today. Pete Heimler, KPMG captain. Brendan Ennis, who many of you have likely talked to, uh, our ride guide. And Steve Merker from Princess Margaret Cancer Foundation. Thank you again for joining us, and I'd like to invite Pete to kick it off. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining today. Thanks, Ramona, and thanks everybody for hosting us today from Princess Margaret. It's a great, a great opportunity to talk to all the riders. I know there's quite a few of you on the line today, so really, I wanted to give you. Uh, Three good tips for uh, the last push as we move into the month of May. It's hard to believe we're, we're only about uh, five, six weeks away from, uh, from ride day, which is fantastic. And the weather is picking up, so that's great news for our training. So three things. One is I'm going to give you some thoughts on fundraising. I'm going to give you some thoughts on how to keep your training program alive, and kicking along until ride day. And then finally, some, some gear things that you have to keep in mind, your, your bikes and equipment. So, so on the fundraising uh, uh, front, if you haven't already uh, started fundraising, um, now's the time. And uh, I'm one of the best procrastinators out there. I always put it off to the bitter end. I always try to encourage uh, some of my donors to donate to some of the other riders on our team. But here's what I do. I look at last year's list. I look at who my, my main donors were. And I target, uh, I, talk, I target my outlook list from a high probability perspective. So I really go into it knowing who has a really high probability of donating to me. And I hit them up first. I really personalize it. I either send them a very detailed personalized email message or I have a high tech communications uh, personalized sales really works very well. So target your list. Look back at if you wrote last year, look at who donated to you last year. and. Uh, go after them very aggressively over the next couple of weeks. If you've already done a mass campaign in terms of mail-outs, uh, now's the time to follow up. Once again, look through those folks who haven't responded, figure out from a probability point of view who would donate to you, and uh, don't be shy about going after them. Sometimes I present it as, hey, I have an investment in the right to conquer cancer, is an investment in our healthcare future, and uh, based on the statistics for cancer, uh, we all have a high probability of ending up with some form of cancer in our life. So. It's a very good investment in our own healthcare portfolio as we go forward. Uh, one thing that you can do is don't be shy. Usually what I do is I ask for a buck a kilometer. So I'm going to ride well over 200 kilometers on a weekend. I know you can donate $200 to me for, for all my efforts. And you'd be surprised the hit rates I get on, on that very simple ask. So it's a, it's a great way to go. Um, one thing that you can do too is um, you, can, you can have a bit of a competitive push either with your fellow riders or with folks you work with, and sometimes you'll say, you know what, I'm well behind, but by next Friday, I'm going to raise a thousand dollars. Anybody up for the competition? And it's a little bit of game on uh, within our team as well as with uh, our fellow staff at KPMG. Um, one thing my wife does, which seems to work very well, is if you if you donate uh, over a hundred dollars to her, she will uh, bake you a dozen butter tarts, which are are world famous butter tarts. Um, in fact, they call her the queen of tarts. So if you've got a gift or a novel idea where you can tie it to, uh, to the donation, it works very, very well. People, people attach a sentimental value to those types of gifts. And she's built up quite the tradition over the years by uh, turning our kitchen into a butter tart factory during the month of May. So that's what I suggest on the, on the fundraising front, certainly on the training front. Wow, it's, uh, it's been a cold spring in Toronto, but uh, no more excuses. The sun is shining today, and we just got to get out on the road. We may have been at spin classes or at the gym or doing other forms of cardio, like hockey or whatever, during the winter, but nothing beats the road. So at this point, you should be doing about two to four rides a week and really pumping up that mileage. I would say on the weekends, you want to be looking at at least doing a 150-plus kilometer uh, a ride either on a Saturday or a Sunday. And the reason you want to do that is if you haven't done the ride before, you have to be physically fit, but you also want to be psychologically fit. And just tuning your brain up to being in the saddle for a couple of hours at a time is a really good thing to do because you go through the ups and downs of the ride, your body adjusts, your brain adjusts, and you get really comfortable with the notion of just being on the bike for two, three, four hours at a time. So, you know, this weekend it looks like it's going to be fantastic weather, so this is your opportunity. Get out on the road, pump it up, and uh, get moving. 
Um, one thing when you're out on the road is to train your body how to eat and drink as you ride. And typically what we do is we wait until we're hungry, we wait until we're thirsty, which is what you don't want to do. If you're riding along, you should be thinking about drinking about a liter of, uh, of whatever kind of hydration that, that you prefer, whether it's a sports drink, whether it's water. Uh, sometimes I'll mix up a home brew with a little bit of water, some maple syrup, some sea salt, and that'll get me through a, a few hours on the bike. But um, you should drink about every 10 minutes. Just sip and, and eat a bit before your body says, I'm thirsty and I'm hungry. And then you won't start to tap into the body's reserves, um, um, which also burns more energy as you ride uh, on a two to three hour ride, training ride. The other, the other thing you should do, is, which uh, works very well, is, is ride in an organized group. Um, we typically run Tuesday and Thursday night training rides out of downtown Oakville. And what the group does, it, it really pushes you a little harder. They say um, some of the research has shown that when you ride in a pack, you tend to ride 20 to 25 percent faster, and you'll ride longer distances, which really helps your fitness. So once again, we're naturally competitive folks. When you get in the pack, the, the speed tends to pick up and the endurance tends to pick up as, as well. So that's a, a really important thing is try and train with a, with a group or with another individual, and uh, that competitive spirit will push you to new levels of fitness. So that's really important. Um, the other thing, too, that I want to talk about is just your gear and equipment. So at this point, if you if you don't have a bike, um, being a first-time rider, you got to get a bike. That's really important. The other thing that you want to do is if you're purchasing a new bike, you probably want to think about getting that bike fitted to your anatomy because typically on a long-distance ride, you, you discover all kinds of aches and pains through your shoulders, your elbows, your knees that um, – can typically be overcome through a good fitting exercise that you would go through a bike store. You should look at your shoes, you should look at your helmet, your gloves, your sunglasses, uh, any, you might want a rain jacket because typically in the spring you can get a, a day of rain. We've had periodic short uh, days of rain on the ride to conquer cancer. All this year we're guaranteeing 100% sunshine. Um, if you are Resurrecting your bike from previous years, you may want to think about a tune-up. One thing I really recommend is don't get that bike tuned up a couple of days before the ride. You should get it tuned up at least a week to 10 days before. Because sometimes you take it in for a tune-up, other things materialize, you take it back out of the road and say, oh, I didn't quite fix the brakes correctly, or the derailleur is kind of clunking along. So you want to have enough time to get it retuned if there are some other problems creep up when you inadvertently uh, take it in for a tune-up and it hasn't worked out that well. Um, a couple things um, we, in the slide deck you'll see that we um, we put in a suggested training program there for you so you can see the type of mileage that you should be logging, which is uh, pretty good. As you say, what you want to do now is increase your intensity of rides and at least put some pressure on yourself once a week to do a longer distance ride. Um, you want to get out there and do, you know, before the ride to conquer cancer, do at least one or two. 80 plus kilometer rides, that will get you psychologically fit to do it. Um, typically, if you've been doing a lot of 20 and 30 kilometer rides, you're probably fit, but you got to be mentally fit to stay in the saddle for that period of time. That will really help you out as you uh, as you get into ride day. Because on a ride day, you want to come across the finish line on Saturday down to McMaster with a big smile on your face because you've done enough training. So that's a good thing. Um, I talked a bit about gear. You'll see um, there's a there'll be a reference to a what to bring list that the ride uh, the ride publishes, so you can go and download that, and um, that'll be a very helpful checklist to you as you prepare for the uh, prepare, prepare for the ride to conquer cancer. You won't show up on ride day by missing your your sunglasses or your cleats or your shoes or your ride gloves. So I just find it a very useful checklist. I sit down the night before and I pack up my duffel bag. And I just check it off with my wife and my daughter. Just go check, check, check. We got it all. We're good to go. We pack it all up the night before. And uh, we wake up on Saturday morning with no worries that we haven't uh, missed any of our vital equipment. So um, that's all I really wanted to convey to you today. We've got some great speakers to follow me. Certainly Brandon is going to talk about some fundraising ideas. And um, I just want to thank everybody for your solid commitment. Uh, I know some of the TKPMG folks are probably on the line, so thanks to everyone.
everyone for all your hard efforts and uh, best of luck as we do this final push through May from a fundraising perspective and on to Ride Day in June. All of us. Thanks. And on to Brandon. I'd like to introduce Brandon yeah. Hannes now, who's going to talk about some fundraising ideas. Yeah, thanks so much, Pete. Um, hello, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, my name's Brennan, and yeah, I know uh, Ramona mentioned off the top, I probably had a chance to talk with uh, with anybody. If you've called into the office, you've either talked to myself or one of my colleagues, and um, and I encourage you to do so if you need help with anything. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking to you about some fundraising tips, uh, kind of what to do once you've reached this point in the uh, in the event, and uh, give you some ideas, talk about the tools that are available, and um, and hopefully later on answer any questions you might have. So I know the countdown's on. Uh, we're a few days out, uh, 37, 38 days till the event. And you might be asking yourself, uh, I haven't hit my goal yet, so what do I do now? What? The first thing I'm going to say is just take a breath, take a deep breath, calm down, uh, remind yourself why you're participating in this event. You know, there's something, there's someone that motivated you to register, challenge yourself to not just the 200 kilometers, but that $2,500 fundraising minimum. So just remind yourself of why you're doing this event. Uh, and then I'm going to start with, when it comes to the fundraising, you know, hopefully you've already sent out that email. I, I know Pete mentioned as well, send out that email, get started if you haven't already. But I'm talking more about if you've already put out those emails, you're telling people to, asking them for support, do what I call is it's, it's repeat, re rewind, and remind them. Um, remind people that you're doing this event. People have the best intentions when you send out that email uh, saying, I'm doing the Ride to Conquer Cancer. I'm going to be riding from Toronto to Niagara Falls. Please donate. Remind them that you're in this event. Everybody, you know, you probably send out that email to everybody in your, in your network. And, you know, we all get those emails come in and then 5, 10, 15 emails on top of that. It's easy for it to get lost. So remind them. Um, and it doesn't have to just be that ask again. You can tell them, you know, wow, it's a beautiful day. I went for a training ride today. Uh, I'm at 50% of my goal. Thank you, everybody. That's going to be those little reminders that you can keep... Uh, those donations coming in, um, but you won't know unless you ask for them and, and ask again. Um, and another thing I noticed based on the calls that come into the office, sometimes people are a little hesitant to blast that message out to everyone in your network. So you see on, on the slide there, it's even mentioning, did you post this on Facebook? You know, are you using social media? Uh, we all have people on our Facebook pages who we probably haven't talked to since we were in high school or younger and uh, let everybody know that you're doing this and why you're riding. Even if you've lost touch with somebody, you know, there's a really good chance that they too have been um, affected by cancer in some way. And when they see those words, that you're doing something to, to help in that fight to conquer cancer, you know, you'll be very surprised at the donations that will come in and the support you'll receive. Um, a fun thing that I like to do, I like to see, create a challenge, cr offer an incentive to people. You know, Pete <laughs> mentioned uh, uh, his wife baking those butter tarts. I, I got to say, based on my experience working with this event, um, you know, and I'm, I'm actually working on a report that shows cupcakes raise more money than any other baked good. So <laughs> I, if, you're, if you are doing a bake sale in your office, um, you know, don't underestimate the power of a bake sale. Uh, it's it's hard for people to resist, and if you make it a weekly or bi-weekly event in your office, um, you'd be surprised at, at that that influx of, of donations that keep coming in. Um, you know, we hear every year there's people who put out a challenge. You know, once I hit my goal, I'm going to shave my head. Uh, we see men saying they're going to wax their legs. Um, put out those challenges. It makes it fun for yourself. If you're doing the waxing, it might make it a little uncomfortable, but it, it does get your donors engaged. Um, create an event for yourself. You know, we always hear about people going to pub nights or or what I call um, tag days. So this is where you can set up outside, you know, if you make an arrangement with the store manager of a Walmart, let's say, 
And when you think of the amount of people that go in front of the Walmart, we've all seen uh, sports clubs or you know cadets outside taking donations. There's a reason they're out there. You can raise a lot of money doing that. And uh, we often hear from our riders who set up on their bikes on trainers. They have friends and family offering support, ringing bells, that they they can race over a couple of hours, anywhere from eight four to eight hundred dollars in a day. You just got to be willing to get out there and spend the time. Um, and a good last minute idea. Uh, and we actually had one of our teams, if you were following the Epic Impact Day campaign that was going on, uh, Team Pine Souls, they were, we even put them up on our Facebook page. They did a last minute garage sale. Uh, so they had a few riders on their team donate items and they put on a bigger garage sale. They raised over $4,000. It, it is incredible the kind of uh, dollars that can be raised if you just give it a try. Um, and you know, on the next slide, you'll my information's there. Please don't hesitate to email me. I have lots of ideas because I hear them from our our riders on a daily basis, and we have thousands of riders, so I have a lot of ideas, and I'm more than happy to share them with you. Um, so now, let's say you've tried all that and uh, you still haven't hit your goal, um, or you know that there's there's a big event coming and. But it might the dollars might not come in until after the event. Uh, if you're doing online check-in, and Steve uh, Merker, who I'll introduce in a moment, he'll talk more about online check-in. But I did want to mention the delayed self-pledge. So if you go and do your online check-in, uh, we often get questions in the office about what is delayed self-pledge. So this is you committing to being there on that ride weekend. You committing to saying, I am going to raise that $2,500 no matter what. And if you go this route, you can we you can continue to fundraise even after you ride. Um, so you know you have the option of you can make that self donation of whatever is that remaining amount, or you just make that pledge and you keep fundraising up until the event, and we'll we'll work with you after the event to keep that fundraising going. And if you're doing that option, I really you know capture that moment. You know, for first-year riders, there's a lot to take in. This is going to be a life-changing journey for you. But make sure you capture it. Take lots of pictures. Keep a little journal of, you know, when you get to the pit stops, the little stories that happen along the way, and share that experience. Some of our riders even update their personal pages after the event to share that. So people use that in their thank yous when they send them out. Um, and a great way to really share those stories, host a summer barbecue. It'll be very low cost, you know, hamburgers, hot dogs. Invite people who would probably want to come celebrate with you anyways. This is a chance for them to make additional donations, uh, hear your stories. And a great tip I actually learned from a rider when they do their thank yous is to say, thank you, I look forward to your support next year. And every time somebody says, oh, I'll, I'll be donating for sure, they make sure they record that in some way. So if it's live, you just make mental note. Uh, if you're sending out your thank yous in an email, in postcards, anybody who responds to say, yes, I'll be there with you next year again, save that because it's a great way to then kickstart next year's fundraising, replying to those messages, thanking them again for their support for year nine, but then uh, going back to them and saying thank you again for your support for year 10. Um, but keep that fundraising going. And again, there's my info. Um, more than happy to help, and I really look forward to seeing you at the starting line. And now I'm going to throw it over uh, to the one, the only, Steve Merker. All right, great animation transition. Yeah. <laughs> Forgive the uh, low-tech uh, transition. So uh, hope everyone's having a good day. So I'm going to get into the uh, event logistics, and hopefully this will alleviate any of the, the concerns that you may have about the, the ride weekend itself. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, newbies, uh, rookie riders uh, on the line right now. So hopefully we can take all the angst uh, out of the uh, the ride weekend for y'all. So start first thing to know is that we want you to do online check-in by May 30th. Um, so go online, do your online check-in, do a delayed self-pledge if you have to. But getting through online check-in is so beneficial so that you get your your ride kit. So all your credentials, your ride jersey gets mailed to you. Okay. If you if you don't um, do online check-in by May 30th, you can still do it 
by June 8th so that when you get to uh, Friday or Saturday uh, on the ride weekend, you can sail through the registration and pick up your package. Um, if you fail to do the June 8th option, then June 11th, uh, so Saturday morning, uh, you're going to have to maybe stand in some lines, but you're going to, you know, you're going to have to show up extra early Saturday morning to pick up your um, your ride kit and get all your credentials put on your bike, etc. Um, also, want to uh, remind everyone: log in on your personal page and update your uh, your rider profile. So, of course, we ask everyone to personalize their page, but make sure you update your rider profile, including including choosing and verifying your route. Uh, we have a lot of people who. Um, haven't selected their route yet, so we need to know how many people are starting in Toronto and starting in Niagara Falls. Of course, go in there and confirm your jersey size. Uh, the folks who have been training diligently, maybe they're gearing down a size at this point in time. Um, also, there's a survey question in there regarding shuttles. So we need to know if you need uh, our shuttles taking people from Toronto to Niagara Falls on Friday for those who are starting in Niagara Falls, and of course for the folks who need a shuttle back to Toronto from Niagara Falls. We need to know the numbers so we can book the appropriate number of, uh, of buses. So that's online check-in. Just get her done is the bottom line message uh, on that one. So now on to Friday, uh, which is uh, bike drop-off day. So whether you're starting in Toronto or Niagara Falls, uh, we do advise that you, um, yeah, next slide. Uh, we do advise that you drop off your bike on the Friday afternoon and you can see between 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock, you can drop off your bikes. There's security there all night long. You don't have to worry about your bike going missing. In, in eight years of the ride, we've never had, knock on wood, never had an issue with any bikes going missing. So drop off your bike on Friday. It's optional. Uh, in Toronto, we have Sporting Life there, so they can give you a last-minute tune-up, um, or if you need any last-minute gear, they'll be there. Of course, we do recommend you get your bike tuned up well in advance of the ride, and don't wait until the Friday before uh, the ride. Um, exhibition places the start line this year. So for the returning riders who participated last year, Humber College is out of the picture. We're back at Exhibition Place, a direct energy center. Um, what else can I tell you? On Friday in Toronto, the yellow flags for all the survivor riders will be available to uh, get affixed on your bike. And if you miss uh, getting the, the yellow flag affixed on your bike on Friday, they can also do that Saturday morning. Um, I do recommend you going on to um, Google this. I'm going to show you. This is the Norco webpage. Okay, so Google Norco Ride to Conquer Cancer, and you're going to see some amazing videos on um, on their website. And it talks about, I mean, changing a tire, raising your seat post, some simple things like that. But also, how to affix your credentials onto your bicycle. One of my pet peeves is, is people do not know how to affix their credentials on their bicycles. They use zip ties and cut off their brake cables so they can't brake properly or they're braking permanently. Um, and where you affix your name tag really affects your ride because you don't want it rubbing on your thighs as you're going along the ride. So um, go to the Norco website, Google Norco Ride to Conquer Cancer, scroll down, you're going to see some amazing videos there that will help, help you um, get ready for the ride. Okay, new, uh, next page. Um, we're on to um, Saturday. Key thing about Saturday is get there early. I have a saying that I live by, rather, uh, I'd rather be looking at it than looking for it. Time is scarce. You want to be there early. It's much nicer to be relaxed on Saturday morning, have an extra breakfast bagel, rather than running around last minute um, trying to look for somewhere to get your bike tires pumped up and you're trying to fill your water bottles. So get there early. And especially if you haven't done online check-in, get there extra early. If you're starting and finishing in Niagara Falls, uh, talk to the host hotel about leaving your car there for the weekend. Uh, certainly at the CNE or the Direct Energy Center, you can leave your car there um, over the weekend as well. Um, Saturday morning when you arrive, first thing you do, you want to drop off your gear bag. Um, have a hearty breakfast. Uh, you can swap out your jersey if necessary. If, uh, again, you lost another size uh, in your jersey, you can uh, gear down and trade in your jersey and get the right size. Ceremony start at 8 a.m. Sh sharp. So we want everyone there to experience opening ceremonies at 8 a.m. sharp. And, of course, a reminder that we ask everyone to wear, in a show of solidarity, everyone to wear the official ride jersey on Saturday. Uh, wear your team jerseys or other jerseys on Sunday, but we try to get everyone to wear the official ride jersey on day one. 
Okay, along the way, next slide. So everything you, you need is on the route. There's pit stops every 25 to 30 kilometers, fully stocked with food and drinks and Advil of sunscreen. There's bike tech, there's medical support. So absolutely everything you need is, is on the route. We've got um, Delari Group is our auto partner, and they supply us like 55 vehicles that are going up and down the road with bike techs, medical support, and you know what? You've heard it over and over again. This is not a race. This is the bike ride. If you're not feeling well, if you're uncomfortable, if your bike is, is broken down, feel free to wave down one of our one of our one of the Delari vehicles, and they'll carry you forward to the next pit stop where you can get your bike looked at. You could get medical attention if need be. Um, fill up your water bottles and eat all the food you uh, you could want. And here's another thing I see at the pit stops. People go to the first pit stop and they see all this amazing food and they fill up the back of their jerseys with like 10 granola bars and chips and apples and oranges and they're like they've got 10 pounds of extra weight. Don't have to do that folks. At the next pit stop all that same food is going to be there for you. So don't you worry. We'll take care of you and you don't have to jam your jerseys full of granola bars and oranges. Um, there's also lunch along the way. If you're a faster rider, you're going to probably have lunch around 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, if, you're, if you're a normal speed rider, you're going to have lunch probably between 11 and 1, depending on uh, what time you arrive to the, to the lunch stop. Um, okay, on to the next slide. So Saturday night, we are going to be spending our camp at McMaster. So this is new this year. We've been at Mohawk College for the past several years, but we're moving to McMaster. And we're really excited about this. Me in particular, it's my alma mater. So I'm really excited to have everyone come to my, my university stopping grounds. First thing you do when you arrive is you put your bike, and if you look on the map on the page, put your bike in the bike racks. And again, we've never had an issue with any bikes going missing, knocking on a wood over here. Stick your bike in the bike rack, and then right beside, as you can see on the screen, the bike parking is the gear retrieval. That's where you pick up your gear bag that you dropped off Saturday morning. So regardless of whether you started in Hamilton or Niagara Falls, sorry, Hamilton, sorry, let me slow down. Regardless of whether you started in Niagara Falls or Toronto, your gear bag will be there waiting for you. Get your gear bag. Go have a shower. There's unbelievable sh shower trucks uh, that are there for you, and you've got to believe me, these shower trucks are awesome. Hot showers for everybody. Have a shower, and then make your way into the festival area. And you can see we've got our big dining tent. We've got massage therapy, we've got a climbing wall this year, yoga, live music, the famous steam whistle tent. So this is one of your rewards for coming across the finish line. We've got steam whistle. We have Kono Sur, a new wine sponsor who is going to be there providing wine for everyone. Um, dinner starts around 4.30. We have camp ceremonies at 6 o'clock. Do not miss the camp ceremonies. And of course, in the middle of uh, Camp Village, we've got uh, the re-registration area. We've got this amazing 10-year anniversary long sleeve cotton t-shirt available for everyone who commits to the 2017 ride. And we want to see it come back and support us uh, in 2017. Uh, more camp details on the next slide. Uh, we encourage family and friends to join us, join you, and, uh, and support you uh, at McMaster. There is, a, a, I think, a $7 parking fee. Um, but we do encourage friends and family to visit. There's paid food options for, for visitors. Um, keep in mind that everything winds down around 9 p.m. On, on Saturday because, of course, we've got another big day on Sunday. So on to Sunday. So first thing you do, you wake up nice and early. You have a hearty breakfast. You pack up your gear bag, drop your gear bag off on uh for one of the gear trucks, make sure you put it on the right gear truck, right? We have gear trucks going to back to Toronto. We have gear trucks going to um, Niagara Falls. So put your bag on the right truck, um, pick up your bike, and then you're going to get rolling. Um, you have to leave between 7 in the morning and 8 in the morning, okay? And then, of course, for the, for whether you're starting, whether you're going back to Toronto or you're, you're finishing Niagara Falls, there's going to be a hill climb. McMaster is situated sort of at the bottom of the escarpment. And there's a hill climb. So for those veteran riders out there, you'll probably have uh, you probably had a chance to ride up Hamilton Mountain. Well, guys, it's not really a mountain. And I did a little research, and I've got a slide here I'm going to show you. I didn't get it included in the official slide, but if you guys have a look at this, you can see 
on the left is the KPMG Tower, which is over 700 feet high, and on to the right is Godzilla. Godzilla happens to be 350 feet high, and that is how high your climb is going to be on Sunday morning. It's not that big. It's not that bad. It's not that hard. We're using a different route up the escarpment this year. We're going up a paved rail trail, and we have a full closure of it. Um, and so you're going to make your way up with all our other 4,000 plus best friends um, making our pilgrimage to, to Niagara Falls. So uh, save a little bit of energy on Saturday for the hill climb. On Sunday morning, drink a little bit of extra coffee because that's one of the first things you're going to do on Sunday morning. Just a reminder about the roads that I forgot to mention is that safety is our absolute number one priority. The roads are open to traffic. We have to abide by the rules of the road when you're riding. So we have a ton of police out there, volunteers, moto safety, motorcycles. There's a lot of uh, measures we put in place to make this a safe ride, but it's only as safe as the riders who are participating. And so you need to communicate with your fellow riders. You need to stop at the stop signs. You need to stop at the red lights, uh, unless, of course, a police officer there is, is uh, ushering you through. But you have to ride safe, you know, going back to the along the way. Yeah, rules of the road. Pass on the left, make sure you're yelling out, passing on the left or on your left. Um, slower riders are supposed to stay on the right-hand side as you're riding, okay? But the road is open to traffic. We don't have a full lane closure all the way from uh, Toronto to Niagara Falls. Uh, again, there's going to be pit stops along the way, and you're fully supported on, on Sunday as well. So Sunday, when you arrive at the finish line, um, what you're going to be doing, most likely if you're taking the shuttle back to Toronto, um, you're going to put your bike on the, uh, the Mackie 53-foot uh, trailer bike truck, and so you don't have to worry about your bike. You want to go and find your gear bag. So pick up your gear bag. The shower trucks are, are located uh, in Niagara Falls in Toronto, so if you wanted to have a shower, you can have a shower. And of course, we're going to have a celebratory barbecue on Sunday afternoon. So we've got uh, barbecue and, of course, more of these. Uh, and it's not just about the steam whistle, but we've got the wine and we've got all kinds of other refreshments um, for uh, to meet everyone's needs out there. Um, the shuttles, if you're taking the shuttle, back to Toronto from Niagara Falls. The shuttles start uh, leaving around noon and as they fill up we send them back home and the, the, the bikes pretty much beat, um, beat you back to Toronto um, as well. But make sure you get your gear bag and bring your gear bag with you on the shuttle vehicle. We've had people in the past leave their gear bag thinking it's miraculously going to appear back in Toronto but you've got to get your gear bag. Um, and that's, uh, that's all I have to say about logistics. Hopefully I've uh, answered um, most of the questions. I know we are taking questions um, right now, so Brendan and I are here to answer any questions that uh, folks might have. Yes, and uh, I have some questions here. You have to scoot out now, Steve. Okay. Here, here's our uh, professional transition. Hey guys, firstly I just wanted to thank uh, you, Steve, so much for uh, talking, to, uh, talking to us about the ride logistics and of course also to Pete and Brendan, and, uh, and we absolutely have to mention KPMG one more time. They graciously sponsored this webinar to keep you all informed and up to date about the latest and greatest. So we are absolutely open for questions, and we have a couple already. For those of you who perhaps haven't noticed, you can submit a question from your control panel. It should be appearing on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, there's a little question option. So, so far we have uh, a couple of questions. So Frank is asking, I checked in online last week. When should I expect the kit to arrive at my home? So, Brendan, Brendan here, why don't you share the screen sure. with me? Uh, this way. <laughs> well, yeah, our, our, well, there we go. our <laughs> team, we're, we're putting those together right now. Um, we're going to be, all the packages, jerseys are coming in, everything's being put together. So the packages are going to be start uh, being sent out probably by the end of this week, early next week. So. You, if you're in those first mailers, you should start seeing them within the next week or two. Great. Thank you so much, Brendan. We have another question from Tony. Um, when can our go-to URL switch to next year if I already registered? Does anybody know the answer to that question? When can our go-to URL switch to next year if I have already registered? Hey, Brendan. Yeah, back. yeah. So that page isn't <laughs> open yet. Each year, it's a it's a new website because it's new donations for each year's event. 
So we will, that URL would need to be updated anyway. So a lot of riders put their first name, last name, and then each year once their uh, new participation center page is open, they just add 2016, 2017. Um, That's great. Yeah. Hope that answers that question. And we have another question. Uh, someone's asking if they can get this PowerPoint. Absolutely. We're going to be posting uh, the webinar to our uh, recorded version of the webinar to our website and, of course, a PowerPoint as well in the next few days. So make sure to uh, check back uh, in the next few days and you'll be able to see it. And we have another question. Oh, this is a good one. When will the root be posted? Who knows the answer to that question? Steve, do you know the answer to that question? Steve, come on over. <laughs> what <are> you... <laughs> Here I am. So uh, I, I did uh, neglect to mention one thing about the hill climb. This week, I'm going to take my bicycle and my GoPro, and I'm going to ride up Hamilton Mountain to show everyone, especially Ramona, <laughs> how easy the hill climb actually is. And we're going to, I'm going to post that onto the Facebook so that people can um, see what the climb is going to be all about. But with respect to the routes, um, we're also going to be putting the final touches on the routes over the next week or so, and then they will be posted. Um, I can't guarantee an exact date, but I'm going to uh, take a guess, probably within uh, 10 days, uh, the routes will be posted. If you wanted to go and, and Google Ride to Conquer Cancer course maps or go to the 2015 uh, Toronto Ride to Conquer Cancer webpage, you can uh, access last year's routes. And last year's routes are going to be fairly similar, um, with, uh, but not the start and finish lines. But, uh, but the rest of the routes are going to be fairly similar. So if you wanted to get out this weekend and ride some of the route, um, the maps from last year are up and the routes are fairly similar. Uh, that's great. Thanks, Steve. So our next question is, when do we pick up our five-year helmet? And I can actually answer that. So if you're planning to drop off your bike on the Friday, then 100% we will have a table with your five-year helmet uh, ready there waiting for you to pick up. Similarly, if you're coming on Saturday, uh, we'll have a table there set up for you to pick up your five-year helmet. Oh. Oh, and for those of you, uh, thanks, Brendan. For those of you who aren't sure what the five-year helmet is, uh, it's our uh, congratulations to you for riding for five years. So everyone you see on route has ridden for a total of five years in the Ride to Conquer Cancer. Next question. Let's see, Gina Marie. At the time of online check-in, I registered for next year. How can I get my 2017 T-shirt? Great question. So your 2017 t-shirt will be available once again on Friday of bike drop-off. So if you're a five-year rider and you want to pick up your gold helmet, you can also pick up your uh, t-shirt uh, on Friday. And similarly, uh, on Saturday at camp. So after you've ridden the first 100K, you can go to our registration table. You can just let people know uh, who are uh, uh, manning the registration table that you've already registered and you can absolutely pick up your uh, T-shirt, your 27 T-shirt uh, there. And I don't know if we have any more questions. One of the couple things that I just made a note of uh, when uh, people were speaking is delayed self-pledge. Just want to reiterate that this is an option if you haven't reached your fundraising uh, minimum. And note that you have 60 days, that's two months after the ride in which to fundraise. So it really gives you a lot of time to maybe take advantage of some of the tips that Brendan gave you about having a, a barbecue, a thank you barbecue, and fundraising that way. Uh, we've got another question here. Do I have to bring a lock for my bike? Absolutely not. So we have uh, incredible bike parking, which as Steve mentioned there, uh, in eight years of the ride, we have never lost um, or had a bike stolen. So if you drop off your bike on Friday night, we have people watching uh, the secured bike park area. And then same on Saturday night. So you roll into camp, you park your bike in our bike parking, there will be coverage all night long for those bikes. So there's millions of dollars worth of bikes and we certainly uh, take uh, bike safety uh, and uh, bike theft very seriously. So uh, to date in eight years, we haven't lost one yet. Um, and then there's another question. Is there an optional extra loop like last year going up the mountain? Did Steve answer that? <laughs> I can't uh, remember. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I, for, no, we do have the, the, uh, the hill climb challenge back in this year. And it's, uh, I believe it's going up, if you're starting in Toronto, it's going up Sydenham again, which is a classic climb out of the Dundas Valley. So yes, that is back. Great. OK, next question. One last one, and then we'll wrap it up. How do we register for next year's ride? Well, 
<laughs> let me tell you. So when you check in online, there's an option to register for next year. And just for, for those of you who might be newer to the ride, it is our 10-year anniversary. So 2017 is 10 years of, uh, strong that the ride has been uh, going on. So we'd love to have you. So during online check-in, please feel free to register you, uh, to, sorry, to register yourself. Uh, invite your friends and family. This will be a really, really special ride. You can also call the Ride to Conquer Cancer office. You, if you visit their we our website at the very bottom, there's um, a phone number there for you. So feel free to call that number and um, our ride guides will be happy to register you. Also, on the day of the event, there is there are options to register. On the Friday, when you do bike, bike drop off, register again, pick up your t-shirt. On Saturday at camp, you can register. And also on Sunday, we are looking to make 2017 the biggest and best ride uh, ever. So please do uh, tell your friends and family about it. So I think with that, we're going to wrap up the session. And remember, any other questions you have, feel free to call our ride guides. They are there to help you through these last six weeks or 30 some odd days left uh, to the, uh, until the event. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for riding uh, to help conquer cancer in our lifetime, raise critical funds for Princess Margaret Cancer Center. In eight years, we have raised $138 million thanks to people like yourself. Thank you so much, and we'll see you en route.